Okay, so how many of you uh, are there since uh, the last webinar? Who were there in last webinar? Anybody? Okay, looks like nobody. So I'll, I'll start off because uh, since many are new here, so I'll uh, go through the uh, idea of uh, picking trades from uh, options OI breakup. So I had explained this in the last webinar also. So I'll just repeat it a couple of more times. So let me start. Before that, uh, the basic uh, thing I suggest uh, people look at is the uh, option change uh, trend column over here and here. Both sides, there is a trend column which uh, interprets uh, the OI, uh, OI and OI change uh, and price change uh, for each and every option over here. So basically when uh, this is bullish on both sides of ATM, so this is the at the money strike here, highlighted as a yellow row. So if both sides, call side and put side is bearish, then uh, the current trend, the trend bias is uh, bearish. And if it's bullish on both sides, then it's bullish. The bias will be bullish. Now, at the moment, you are seeing that call side is bearish and put side is bullish. This indicates a sideways trend bias at the moment. So this just indicates uh, the point of time trend bias, the trend bias that is currently there in the markets. So you, you can keep uh, option chain open and then just monitor this because this keeps on changing pretty fast, especially when the trend changes. And if the trend is continuing, then this continues to show you uh, the direction bias properly. So this works most of the time. On expiry day, it's a little bit different because the OI acts differently on uh, expiry day. So on all other days, you can monitor this properly. And this works uh, most of the time. Now, second thing, once you have formed a trend bias, then you can look for trades uh, in that particular direction. And the other tool that I uh, uh, recommend that you look at uh, for uh, taking the trades, or rather a setup to take, take the trades. That is before you decide what trade are you going to take, you can look at options uh, intraday OI breakup. To do that first, go to futures chart. We'll take the last trading day, yesterday's, and the 15 minutes time frame. let us take Nifty. The first 15 minutes close, because here, here I'm recommending you look at, let me take the latest one here, 15 minutes. You look at 15 minutes because this gives you at least some data to work with because five minutes would be too fast. The OI buildup can change pretty fast every five minutes. So 15 minutes will give you some sort of reliability. So you, uh, I suggest you look at 15 minutes. And just a minute here. And the first 15 minutes close here is 16.626. So I would round it off to 16.6 as the ATM strike. So here, once the first 15 minute of the day is done, so 9.30, this particular row is complete. And at 9.30, you can start looking at this data, not before that. Before 9.30, from 9.15 to 9.30, this data is still getting built. So you would have to wait. And you can, this is true for the whole day. The topmost row that is uh, uh, shown, that is still getting built. So you need to ignore that and look at the completed row. So this, this end time, this time is when it gets complete. So we start our monitoring at 9.30 onwards. At 9.30, call side, Sorry, let me, this is 16.6. Take at the money strike that we have decided based on first 15 minutes close. Then go to one minute. Then go to OI breakup. Look at 16.6. Select 16.6 here. Make sure expiry is the one you are trading and 15 minute time frame. Now here look at build up on both sides on a call and 
put side. If both sides is short build up, uh, I call this this particular this kind of uh, build up as strong build up. So either short build up and long build, long build up, short build up, or vice versa. Long unwinding, short covering. These are these are what I call as weak signals. These are strong ones. You can go ahead. This short build up, short build up is strong. This just indicates it's a sideways move at the start of the market or opening after opening of the market. Fifteen minutes after market open, it shows as both sides are balanced pretty well. So there is no significant direction indicated. You can, if you are a seller, you can just sell a straddle here, or you can, if you want to trade only one side. If you are a buyer, then just wait for proper signal. I'll tell you how to pick those signals. But here, initially. It, it indicates a sideways trend bias. So you can either short this straddle or you can wait for a clear signal on one side if you are a one side trader. Now here we got a long at, at 945, this row is complete. At 945, you have a long buildup sig signal uh, on the call side and short buildup on the put, put side. This is a strong signal as this is a strong signal. So here, we would be looking to buy a call and short a put. And a buyer would buy a call and the ones who are shorting would short a put. But we need to look at price to confirm. This is just half of the analysis. Why is supporting this particular view? We have to go and check if uh, price itself is supporting or not. Latest here, 17th March call, 16.6. I'm looking at those same options here. I'm looking at a two minute time frame. We are analyzing why on a longer time frame as why takes time to build. It is already three minutes delayed and we should give it some time to build. So we, we use a longer term time frame for why. Whereas price is where we are actually trading. Our risk is all decided over here. So we look at lower time frame. Here I have plotted two minute chart with super trend. 10,3. So now what I do is I try to, now this, this over here is long build up here at 9.45. So after 9.45, that is over here, I'm ready to take a long position here. So you can take a long position here after 9.45 if you, you can take this stop from here. Suppose you are buying 9.45, this is done. So here, if you are taking over here, then from here to here is your risk. Because your stop loss would be somewhere below this. So you would take this, this risk. If this is okay, then you can go along here. And probably you would get stopped out over here once this bar is done. Over here. You have wait for the close. And then once super trend gives a sell signal, you are out over here. Now on the put side, if you're selling, you could short the put. Put 16.6. Again, I, I would be shorting the put here with a stop loss over here. I would be out over here. This would obviously end in a loss. And on the call side, it has ended in a same. Again, this is a small loss over here. Now the idea is to keep taking those signals on what is going to happen is yesterday is Friday. Friday, this is, if you get a sideways move on a Friday, you would see this kind of action. You would see this kind of action where you'll get too many signals. If you look, look for other days, and this is especially true because you now the volatility itself is significant. So time decay is going to be minimal that too on a Friday. So this is going to be a problem. Your sales are going to be a problem. Buys are also going to be a problem. Whereas if you if you look for uh, the moves on a Wednesday or a Thursday or even on a Tuesday, you would you would be able to capture longer moves like these. So, so but the idea is to stay with this. Even if you if you look at this now, the next strong signal is this at ten thirty. We are still monitoring 16.6. Unless the price really moves, say, 100, 200 points, you don't need to change this. 
If you just want to trade an option, you can continue to trade or you can change the strike here. If, if uh, there is a 100 point move, you can probably change this to 16.7 or 16.5 based on which side price has moved. So let us take this the next example again. After this, this was long build up here. This weak signal we continue to ignore. This is this. This is again a strong signal here and a clear strong signal over here. 10.45. This is a short call signal and a long put signal. 10. 10.45 here. This is a short call. So again, this would have ended here. So this. Sideways move, this is going to happen significantly. I mean, you would see the same. We will take other days and see how you can capture bigger trades here. This also is the same. You are 1045, you have a buy signal here, which would exit here. So yesterday was one of the days when you, you just took small losses and you got out. Same on the put side, on the calls, same on the call side. Now, just to see, let us take last week's example. As I said, Wednesday or Thursday, you would get both time decay and the, uh, the move itself was pretty large. So you one-sided moves would be there. So let, let us take on the expiry date itself, 10th, where the, actually it was at least not a single-sided because single-sided then uh, there's no fun. I mean, it, it would be, you would just capture, you would enter a trade and then you would just exit at the you would be able to capture a very big trade, probably in call here and you would sell a put, probably sell a put and then you could capture a big move. Let us take 10, which was the expiry. Sixteen six again, I would take the same 16.6 after first 15 minute close. And I would go historical here. I'd go to 10th March. 16, 6, 15 minutes time frame for 10th March. Nine thirty. Nine thirty. long is indicated here on the call side, short on the put side. All 16.6. For, uh, for option charts, just ignore this select date because we have not implemented it. Because in any case, when you select the option, it loads the whole data series. So nothing much to do here. So you can ignore the select date. So it will anyway load the whole series. You just have to scroll. Now here, 9.30, you just go long with the stop loss here. And you would, uh, this trade would end up in profit over here. On the put side, historical, 10th March, put 16.6. Two minutes. We have a short build up here. So around 10, 9.30 here, we would go short with the stop loss over here. You would, now from here around 52, you would probably, it's at 13 and you would probably exit over here once the price closes above super trend. Now you would see the trend would be, I mean, you would see this because on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, you would be able to capture like this. You just have two trades here. Now here, this was long here, this was short. Okay, now this is one thing I need to explain. At 9.45, you got a short Y signal on the call side and a long on a put side. But here at 9.45, you are in a long trade actually here from 9.30. So here you got a short signal, but you would not exit because you are in this trade, you would continue because price has to match, as I said. So this is only half of the analysis. The rest of the main analysis price also has to support your analysis. Only then you would take action. So here you are in a long trade from here, 9, 9.30 over here. So 9.45 signal, you would ignore. Of course, you, you would be watching this if super trend gets, breaks here and gives us short signal, but it did not. So you would ignore it. 
same for the put side put side has given a long here at 945 but there is nothing here i mean absolutely no signal here to go long so you would continue in this trade now here all these are weak signals over here so because only one side is giving a strong signal the other side is not so you would continue in that particular that same trade the next signal was You got it at one forty-five. Pretty, pretty late. Okay, this got very late. You, you could have taken a on weak signals. You could have taken over here, over here. But that is yes. I, I this is going to be a weak signal. You, you, you could take it based on this weak signal plus your price action. But it would be late. A strong signal was given somewhere over here. This was again a short, small trade, but significant. 50, 60 point trade over here. Same for uh, put. You got after 13.45 over this one. This was again a, uh, another 50, 60 points move over here. This is it. So there were two decent trades over here. Two very decent trades over here. So you would you would tend to see something like this on a expiry day, or even on Wednesdays, Tuesdays. You can take a look. Fridays and Mondays would be a little bit tricky because the time decay would not be significant. But if there is a one side trending move, then you would you would still be able to capture it more so on a Monday than on a Friday. Any questions? Uh, Mr. Srikant. Yeah. yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Actually, we can use these charts in conjunction with the total put call open charts. Actually, that's what I'm practicing. Okay. Yes. Same. Okay. Yes, you can. Uh -huh. So then we get, we'll add uh, strong confirmation here. If you go down, yes, you told me that what are right side green uh, OI changes all. Uh, Positive trend, right? As per your data. Yes, correct. Correct. So this, uh, this is all uh, what the red color is uh, negative trend, right? Yes, yes. Basically, this is yeah the difference. So yeah, that is what you are right. I mean, basically from nine thirty to nine forty five, it was positive. That is what this indicates. Correct. Mm. So, uh, so here, if you can add something like uh, strong buyer. By our cell columns after the OI change trend, we can incorporate. I think it will be fantastic because yeah, I did actually not, uh, the issue is yeah, we, we can probably add bullish, bearish, something, but not buy yeah. and sell because we don't want to directly no, 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 give okay. buy sell signals. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what I mean is you can say it is bullish. You can add it. Sure, sure. That yeah, because we can. Uh, we can and, and, uh, if you go down, for the go down, please scroll it down. I want to show you sure. an interesting thing what I observed. Here, put call ratio is there. If you can see here, yeah. On the day Friday around 10 15, you can see Nifty started dropping. Yeah. And now uh, what happens is uh, what I observed is put call ratio. When it starts dropping, even though Nifty starts going up, mm -hmm. even though Nifty starts going up, we can take it as a sell signal because in short covering, what I've done is put call rating will fall down automatically mm -hmm. so by these charts. You need to be careful, sir, because you'll see, mm -hmm. you observe it for a while and then uh, take decisions mm -hmm. based, based on so that. You can, you can add some possible uh, green and red arrows like buy or sell because what happens is price starts uh, going up. That we, price I, I frankly, I, we will not be adding buy sell signals anywhere because it, okay. it gets tricky because we, we do, I mean, mm -hmm. that becomes a problem because uh, people start blindly taking those signals. It is a problem because I no, maintain that why, why analysis, whatever you do, those are, yes. that is still half a signal. You still need okay. price needs to confirm only then if you take that is a lot more it's better because you would see what many I'm times it goes the opposite way. 
No, but what happens in 99% of the times when uh, what I observed is when put call ratios first start sprawling automatically when the price is going to reverse. Most of the times. Fine, you can, you can continue to observe, sir. Fine. Okay, sure. so that's what uh, and I'm uh, correlating this with charts and uh, option charts and that option sure. chain data and then coming to a conclusion before entering the trade. Yes, yes, sure. That is, that is, yeah, so, that is fine. That so is fine. In, in why change the trend? I think you can add this column, bullish or bearish like that. Sure, because we can do that. There, there is a few more things being added to this. So yeah, I'll suddenly, we'll, we'll take a look at that. We'll, we'll do it. Please. Similarly, <coughs> I told you know, that IV, if you can plot it on the price chart itself, instead of underneath. Yes, yes. In price versus OI, right? Uh -huh, yes, yes. yes, yes. That, yeah, I've already told that to my tech team. So they'll be they'll be adding it. Yeah. At the moment, uh, everybody is busy in those uh, customizing those trading view charts. So things are a little bit delayed, but we'll, we'll work on all those things and make sure it is done. Shortly, we'll be getting the trading view charts with you. No? Instead of these charts, we'll get that one or this one. Also yes, will be there. Uh, this will move to uh, beta or something. And then initially, we'll, we'll provide the, the trading view charts under beta. And then we'll mm -hmm. move to those uh, main tools. And then we'll move these two previous versions under beta, the existing ones. We'll That's do right. it in phases. So because, uh, yeah, people might get confused. So we'll keep uh, both of them available for a while. And then phase them out. Phase them out. Yeah. Actually, this uh, particular tab was very impressive for me. Actually, when I observed that call change and put change lines are there now below. Yeah. Yeah. If they move along with price, then we can decode it saying, uh, you go down, you go down, please. Uh, here, here. We, we can automatically come to a conclusion that uh, when price is moving up and call OI is also moving up, extra means. Uh, Yesterday, actually, it was sideways. If you go to something yeah. like bank it's sideways, what I do is I use the Bollinger Band so that uh, that extreme, this extreme, I pick up and uh, plan the trade uh, sure. because uh, all the signals will be bypassed by that one I mean, sideways. So That's the whole idea, sir. I mean, basically, you do uh, Y analysis, try to determine the, your bias, mm -hmm. then look at price uh, based some indicators or something, and based on price, you get confirmation and then take the trades. That is the whole yes, point behind every, everything. You can use why breakup. You can use this mm -hmm. particular table. Whichever you do based on these, again, you can go to option chart, check super trend, and then validate. The idea yeah. is the same. Half analysis, right. do it on why, and then determine the trend bias, and then go to your actual price charts, and then make sure price is going in your direction before you take the trade. That's the whole idea. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Sri Kong. Sure. Hello. Uh, yes. Hello. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. Uh, Shrikan, sir, Hello? this is Vinay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, regarding this uh, straddle chart, hmm. uh, can we add uh, that particular strike uh, PCR uh, uh, chart into that? Does it give any sense in terms of interpreting? That uh, you know uh, the uh, the long straddle or a st short straddle. Yeah, we will probably we can probably do it in straddle watch, but not straddle charts, because uh, here probably we, we should be able to add PCR somewhere over here, but straddle charts itself we will not be able to do it. We okay. can we can try once trading view charts are there. I can check with my team, but here we definitely can't okay. add. There is no way to add in this chart. We can probably add somewhere here if required, but uh, I don't know if I, it may help. I'm not sure. It, it depends. Basically, it will tell you uh, what this Y is doing in a way. Yeah, yeah. These are Y lines. So based on this, you would be able to tell at least which side uh, it is going. But here you can do the same. I think you, you can view Y here itself and see which direction or which Y is taking over. Basically, mm -hmm. now uh, what I was uh, asking is the in particular to that uh, uh, straddle chart, that particular strike prices uh, PCR, uh, uh, you know, uh, the chart movement will give some idea uh, to enter into the long straddle or short straddle. Uh, 
it may give see even if you even if you look at pcr eventually no eventually you get look at straddle price itself or uh, because that itself will give a clear indication because the idea of uh, looking at pcr would be to uh, get an idea which side uh, okay you're talking about long or short straddle yes 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 the crossover gives the signal na sir yeah yeah that for that uh, suppose in in straddle what if you, if you can please go to that uh, straddle chart and uh, and a uh, the plot a v wrap Now, sometimes if it goes above the wave app, I think we can plan for a long straddle and yeah, short straddle. I, I just want to understand in terms of TCR chart, does it give any, you know? Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't really think so because uh, see, uh, straddle going. Okay, there are there are two things. One one is this can happen. Straddle shooting up can happen either when uh, IV significantly moves up. or or it could be a one sided move also could be due to one sided move so one sided move you can probably capture using pcr or you can just capture using uh, just looking at this itself which side uh, one uh, price is going on a one way so yeah using option prices no, in, in, in straddle in straddle chart the price is directly you know uh, the directly it is uh, reflecting there yeah this itself with this itself we can do it because straddle will shoot up either due to iv or due to one sided move so i mean whatever it is it will be clear using straddle price itself so based on this itself we can do i think the complication of pcr is not required in for in this particular case i feel because what is going to happen pcr is really going to move fast uh, only after the move has happened because why you will get 3 minutes probably 3 minutes late and then why uh, one side why getting un unwinded due to a one sided move is going to happen only a little bit later before that you will see this in straddle price itself so ideally just look at straddle price with say bollinger bands or keltner or with vwap and all that or you can monitor iv also you will know that through that itself i feel pcr may not be required this is really i have one question yeah so uh, how do i is there a way to see uh, oi changes across multiple strikes i know the multi strike oi plots it but uh, uh, i want in the more uh, uh, consumable way in terms of numbers right Let, let's say if there there is a move and there is a 300 400 points move i want to see what are the strikes that are unwinding and where it is going to stop that is the idea uh now we don't have in at least in numbers we don't have anything like that even on a chart basis you can look at so what i have to do is have to select each strike and see the individual uh, in the price versus oi uh, chart right i select all these things and see the oi change oi unwinding happening or you can select select do selected strikes here okay here in this and so these two lines will tell you what is mm. happening the red and So you can select prior your strikes here. Multiple strikes. Yeah, multiple yes. strikes here. This will give a consolidated single, single. You know, say suppose suppose I take this here sixteen six six five zero seven sixteen six. This will give you a combined a cumulative uh, why whatever why change is happening for the, these strikes. This is the way. You I can, see this, but yeah. I was looking for an individual strike OI change. So this yes. I I am looking at in the from the community OI change. Yeah. Then individual. Then yeah. Then you already know only multiple strikes is there. Again, here you can select selectively only selected strikes. You can. Okay. I'll I'll try this. Yeah. Okay.
so the other thing is that uh, i just want to learn the iv analysis whatever charts that are already available there how to use them maybe when you get time please explain it okay uh, iv and iv skew skew ivr ivh those things okay thanks hello sir can you hear me sir ready sir yeah yeah uh-huh. Yes, sir. Uh, morning, Sigan, sir. Uh, sir, I got a question about the the follow up of the trading view charts. Uh, it's a good thing that uh, I charts is going to the trading view charts. Mm-hmm. What I want to understand is the original trading view doesn't have the option uh, option interface. Yeah. So what I charts is is going to have the trading view interface just like what Kai is having, or it's going to be more uh, than. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Can you hear yeah. me, sir. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so it's yeah, going had... to be the same. What kite is happening, but because now as I charts is having much better tools in terms of options, which are not mm-hmm. available, I think in any other uh, big big platform. So mm-hmm. my first question was that is the trading library the same, and uh, like what kite is there, and and second question is is it not be possible. that we use the usp of uh, i charts in the option data and try to interpret it certain things as indicators in the trading view which are not available on the fire typical kite platform like say on a chart i have the nifty futures right mm. and now the indicator section now what others are offering is that i can only have the oi of the nifty futures yeah but as uh, the trading view uh, this thing if i charts can think about something like uh, i'm having a nifty future charts but in the lower indicator panel it gives me a choice to put the oi of whatever strike c or uh, whatever put uh, put c so will the will that be uh, possible so that in the charts i will get the benefit of the usp of uh, i charts uh, trading tools to some extent in the trading view library so can it be possible sir yeah very very good question the will will have to see i mean see uh, anything that we add in the bottom panel would be sort of like an indicator and uh, indicators at the moment we are only working on uh, uh, open interest uh, y change iv pcr uh, so these kind of things so this uh, these of course will be related to only the uh, the script that you are looking at so now uh, you you can actually you will be able to compare scripts like nifty futures versus bank nifty futures or uh, this particular option versus that particular option so you that way comparison is available but uh, nifty futures and then plotting uh, the oi of a particular option i think that would be a little bit difficult uh, i but we'll have we'll have to see i mean i at least at the moment it is going to be difficult because Uh, it's going to it going to be difficult i know that sir because but yeah. if you can just as just a as a trader you can understand the logic of my saying this i'm yes, uh, yes. understand the import. i got it got but, it yeah and you are in the design stage because i have been using that with mr when i am a student of uh, mr mr nandi and before he okay. moved to i charts okay to have the have the thing coded you know so mm. we used to have this uh, coded he used to give us the coded formulas and mm. we used to watch the nifty And used to watch in the lower indicator okay. uh, the uh, this thing. So as it is in the design stage, and mm-hmm. you are the I chart knows the USP of the option uh, OI analysis and the tools are there. So mm-hmm. if some little information more than what Kite and all those guys are offering, mm-hmm. if little more in using uh, I charts uh, other tools which are there. If a small percentage of integration is there, it will be, I think, a different game changer for the charts which uh, uh, I charts are providing. And I'm saying this because we are just in a design stage. So if you can, if my make some impact, you can think how to go about it, sir. I will sure, definitely look into it. The the only issue is going to be the limitation of trading view charts library. So because it is quite restricted. I mean, what is available on trading view website is. completely different i mean it, it lots of features are there but whereas uh, this is going to be a, a subset of uh, that library so not all features are going to be available in this uh, library they give it to other websites 
so limitations are there so we need to still take a look will so whatever initial implementation we are doing is for uh, uh, like we want to replace the charts we have now but at the same time yeah definitely we'll we'll take a look and see what all is possible or if there are any other ways to do it uh, we'll will certainly keep that in mind and think about it i'll we'll see we'll definitely right look into it thank you sir yeah thanks thank you okay uh, okay any specific questions on any specific tools okay somebody was uh, yeah talking about uh, i was going into going into that uh, sir i do have a question can i ask it first yeah just a minute huh? let me go through uh, somebody had asked about ivr ivp scan and all that so i'll just quickly point out that okay uh, ivr ivp scan uh, kindly go here options ivr ivp scan and take a look at this here blue button is there so we have given some information about ivr and ivp and how to use it so i think this this will give a clear cut picture of how to use ivr and ivp so more than that i don't know here uh, i'm not sure what i can explain over here because we have, we have i have put all the information i can over here so if there are still any uh, doubts then you can come back to me and uh, i'll try and give you more examples but it's basically yeah sure so this is for ivr ivp scan and uh, sku itself uh, uh, we need to uh, improve uh, volatility sku chart a bit because uh, mr shubhdeep nandi had uh, given me few suggestions and uh, we are going to implement that that part is pending he said uh, uh along with this chart uh, the actual uh, the data itself the uh, in a data table format if it is going to be available then it is going to be a lot more useful and also if some history is available so you can see how skew itself has moved uh that would be really helpful so we we need to work on that we have that noted and we need to do that but at the moment this volatility skew itself gives you uh, how the volatilities are there across strike prices and across uh, put and calls so whatever expiry you have selected for the call side and put side we display the volatility distribution across strikes so the idea would be basically to plot this and maybe uh, future expiry uh, together and see how much the difference is between these two also within the same expiry also probably people would look if the skew is abnormal like uh, normally uh, this these lines would be slightly lower and then someone would observe that uh, now the skew has uh, steepened i mean the lines have got really vertical so this would be lot more that's the reason why mr nandi said that uh, we should have a, a data table where actual numbers will be there and it will be lot more clearer that the volatility is how they have changed so uh, now this would not give a i mean you would not know it very easily that how steep the q uh, skew is uh, compared to how it was say in last week or so but the basic idea here is to sell expensive options and buy uh, cheaper options and uh, within the expiry and also uh, when compared to the uh, different expiries now if you if you see near term expiries are going to be expensive uh, these 17th march lines are higher so volatility is higher whereas 31st march uh, lines are lower which means volatility is it uh, volatility is lower so generally for calendar spreads and diagonal spreads you would that is how they are traded where uh, you short the near expiry options and then you sell uh, you buy you go long the far expiry options so this is there but but this would be i mean you would be able to exploit more when sudden when this these lines get wider i mean there is lot of gap between the current expiry and a future expiry so then you would be able to exploit that uh, spread really well which is also called the skew month to month skew and uh, and this is within expiry skew also so this chart is uh, mostly for that to observe the 
volatility distribution itself and then take your calendar trades or diagonals or even within the same expiry also which strike prices you want to sell versus which you want to buy so you can do that using this chart and it this will be a lot more useful once we have the data table also because then the data table with data table if you go to history and check you would be able to see how the skew has changed then you will know that maybe if compared to last week this month uh, now this week uh, the volatilities have really expanded a lot more so there is a, a more chance of uh, to uh, say uh, sell and then make use of that volatility maybe capture that volatility uh, difference so we'll try and add that data table and the history of the skew as well uh, so that will be a lot more useful so that was about uh, volatility skew Uh, any more questions? I have 15 minutes. I need to stop at 12 because I need to step out. So if you can, if you have any questions, I can take those. Sir, I have one request. Uh, so can you go to the future chart uh, once? Yeah. Uh, I... Then add a cumulative open interest to it and take it. And please select the reliance just for the example. For oh, reliance. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So if we see, now, sir, uh, like uh, if I want to find out uh, in the current series where was the highest future OI has been built up. So yeah. we can see that it's around the uh, 8th of March, kind yeah. of 8th of March and beginning of the 8th of the March. Yeah. So can we have the scanner related to this? Uh, means currently I'm using the Power BI tool. Uh, I extract that info from Bhav copy, EOD Bhav copy. Okay. But I don't see the scanner for it uh, in our tool. So maybe we can consider that. Sure. So this you... Okay, you want this uh, basically historically how much? Uh, no, no, uh, like if current are... series is going on for March. So I just want the where is the highest cumulative open interest has been built up. If okay. like I, I, I was to able to scan at uh, 1030, then there should be some uh, <clears throat> two, three stocks that should the, the can should output it at that point of time. Got it, got it, yeah. That's a good idea. I'm, I'm noting this down. Just a minute. Huh? Just a minute. Uh, Mr. Srikant? Sure. Noted it. Yeah. Uh, actually, this uh, volatility skew, IVR and IVP are something like Greek and Latin for most of uh, the people, as I, including me, of course. Sure. So can yeah. you uh, please conduct, may, uh, decode it and uh, Conduct a webinar on it to how to in a simplified way, even a layman can we should be able to understand. Sure, sure. I'll, understand yeah, sure. I what I'll do is uh, I'm actually I've already started uh, creating short uh, videos on say 10-15 minute videos on each tool. So oh. I need to finish those. I'll uh, for volatility skew itself, as I said, uh, once the data tables also we have put and history also we have put. Then I'll create uh, that video because then I actually I'll be able to explain how to actually utilize it uh, properly, profitably. Ah, yes, yes. But I should be able scan, to understand it. Right? Yeah, yeah, sure. IVR, IVP scan, definitely I'll uh, uh, make that video uh, pretty soon. So I've already Next started slide. making those short videos. So I'll okay. put those videos on. Actually, and the small suggestion is uh, as, as many frequent events, if you conduct like this, we get familiarized with the tools and uh, um, what should I say, uh, we'll have a love, we'll develop some sort of love or right. engineering right. tools to use it. So that actually after one year, now I'm able to use them fully, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so that to familiarize us uh, with uh, these things, so that uh, will be till more useful. Sure. Every every Saturday, eleven o'clock, uh, I am going to do this. No. So you can you can. It's definitely going to be there every Saturday. If it is not there on Friday itself, I'll tell you. Maybe I'll post it oh, by another one day or so, whatever it is. But otherwise, okay. in general, every Saturday at eleven, we will have this webinar. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So you can maybe last finish. time last time webinar I saw around 20 people and now there are around 30 participants. So yes, yes, sure, sure. Post it in advance and uh, make it more and more. Uh, what should sure, I say? Sure. People are aware of it. Right? The more people yeah. will be able to use it, and uh, it is good for your site also. That's what I want. Sure, to sure, say. definitely, definitely, sir. Sure. So. Okay, yeah, about this uh, COI, I, I, I've noted it down. So we'll work on that scan, definitely. I think it's a good idea. Sure, we'll work on yeah, it. Yeah, sir. Yeah. And sir, so, one more thing. Uh, if we, I have seen the strategy BJ sir's video. So again, I do that on the Power BI tool uh, at the EOD, uh, whether how much percentage of in the money uh, is like call strike, uh, OI change has happened or put strike, so OI changes happen. Yeah, but uh, are we going to consider that uh, improvement in our tool? Yeah, the the I plan see. is to add in this option chain in the below part summary part. We are going to add a lot of data over here. Lots of things are already there, and here I plan to add uh, the uh, in the money, out of the money, why change and why itself, and a uh, lot of other things that uh, Mr. BJ was uh, discussing. So I got those ideas. I've noted. So I'll make it available here in the summary. So the option yeah. chain, actually, there is a lot of stuff uh, to be done. And it is about half done, and we still have to complete it. So but yeah, all, yeah. all that, we'll add it in the summary here. So it should be a lot more. Again, everyone has different uh, point of view to extract the info. So <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Sir, one request to add back test, uh, back testing uh, uh, idea here in this website. Like, yeah, back back test is a big task, so yeah, yes, we yes, need yes. some time for that. We really also need to plan the infrastructure for that because uh, it's going to be very heavy on the resources. Yeah, because so anyway, you are having all historical data, so yes, so. yes, no, we will we'll definitely make use of that and back testing. We'll definitely add it. There's the, no doubt about that. It's just that. Yeah, it will take some time because we need to plan it properly. Because otherwise, because I'm, just... I'm subscribing now only to iCharts. I unsubscribe all the other tools like Frank Lamb telling. So, I sure, sure. To iCharts. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Sure, we'll definitely, sure, definitely one... add it. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sarvant? Yeah. Another thing, a small request to you. Nowadays, after so many, because we are having all wonderful tools with. Uh, which I did not find in other sites uh, to the best of my knowledge. Mm -hmm. So apart from it, nowadays what is happening is the algo candles are there now. Mostly they are eating away whatever strategy we have and uh, suddenly some red candle or green candle, big candle falls. Yeah. So if you can focus on it, because nowadays people are also, number of webinars they are conducting on the algo candles. Okay. So what happens is suddenly... We buy a we buy a put or a call. Suddenly, some green or red candle comes in between. Mm. So, if you can, uh, what should think on that line in new dimension can be added to the site. Algo candles. <laughs> yeah, but stop because, loss is only the solution for this. Yeah, you just I, simply the stop loss and go. <laughs> yeah, but anything one, <laughs> there is no other way for this. No, I what, think what I think you need to just change the methodology of trading i mean trading yeah. method has to change because can't do i mean alg algos will do that i mean as more and more yeah, algos wow. come into the market uh, this is going to be yes, there anyway so, so uh, i have been attending some of the webinars and um, also observing what happens is uh, some uh, after reaching a particular trigger price suddenly the algo gets activated and suddenly starts to make a waterfall effect or a steep uh, what should I say? One sided direction it yes, takes. Yes, yes. So that's what is happening. And uh, actually, I'm, I'm attending some of the webinars also on this. Mm -hmm. So that is where what happens uh, after three, four candles, uh, they go on fastly. We'll not be able to catch. Even if you put the order again, five price, they it keeps on increasing, increasing till such time oh. it reaches the re its required level. Then uh, suddenly it triggers. Which it's will have waterfall I'm, effect. Yeah, I'm not sure what we can do about it, but uh, what sort of analysis or tools we can give for that. But yeah. <laughs> because I'm bringing to your, uh, what should I say, notice because you should already notice it. Uh, you can, uh, because you will be having a lot of circle where you, the stock market experts and other things, uh, 
So yes. that is where small okay. retail investors are getting butchered because what happens suddenly everything, whatever thousand or two thousand rupees we make gets washed out in that particular direction. It's so important to, for to... that kind of uh, thing. It is important to not. Uh, I mean, go one level higher. I mean, don't uh, be a very a kind of a scalper kind of a trader. Your scalpers yes. will get affected a lot uh, when algos. Uh, lots of algos are there. Because uh, fast moves are going to be a problem. So if you are trading an option strategy, uh, then uh, it would be a, uh, that yes. may it may not affect that much because he, as part of your whole strategy, then everything will be covered, and you'll be the duration also will be slightly longer. I mean, even if yes. in day it is a part of a strategy, yeah. then it will be different. But scalping yes. it's going to be definitely going to be an ongoing problem. No, no. Scalping simply will be butchered because uh, three minutes, two minutes. Yes. Yes. So the entire game will be over and will be left to uh, uh, high and dry. That's the thing. Yeah. So just I'm bringing it on notice because uh, you will bang wider circle and where uh, new dimension can be added in this angle if something can be done. Because sure. Yeah. All, all those are also created by human beings only, but human beings cannot control it. That's the thing. Sure, sure. Yeah. Any so other... go beyond the price, what is happening? So uh, actually, yes, that's what I'm trying to decipher and decode. It. That's yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, any, any other doubts uh, anybody has, I can take. We have a uh, few more minutes. Hello. Yes, sir. Sir, here. Yeah. sir one, uh, one request, sir. It's on the perspective of positional uh, uh, traders, hmm. which I am. So, this is that for the, for as a positional trader looking at the future OI on a little long term basis, whatever available is there is a chart, uh, charts open interest, the COI, the combined COI, and other yeah. is the Month, month series, uh, you got that Excel sheet from the first month to uh, EOD is that uh, we get to know it's short or long. So my request is that you have got data from 2018. Yeah. So I have been using a, a tool with uh, another vendor for that particular thing is that if I say I'm concentrating on what is happening in Reliance on a long-term basis. So mm -hmm. if I have the OI representation of short buildup, long buildup and, uh, and a short covering in a Bar type, bar type formula, like mm -hmm. bars. Every day, for if it's a short covering, you have a have a different color code, and uh, if the volume up and down, so if it was a short covering with say increase in volume, that the bar height is more and the mm -hmm. color is different, and also the price on the price on it. So I can have a long bird's eye view that last three months, and you got data say for 2018. So you can have a little more data, say around uh, six months or eight, nine months on a single view with the bars, you know, I can see the price of Reliance, which is plotted as a line graph on that bar chart and every day different bars for long. So say if now Reliance is having continuous longs. So at a one glance on that bar chart, I can see this last six days, I am seeing long buildup with the COI also increasing as the bar size each day is also increasing and okay. also the price is up. So I got to know where the longs or smart money has mm -hmm. entered at that at that price. I and mean, that price is going to be defended in the long, long distance. So if the tool is incorporated, it will be very helpful for the positional uh, uh, traders like me. Got it. Perfect. I think this is a very good idea. I'm noting this down. I think, yeah, this is quite straightforward. We can certainly do it. I'm, okay. I think we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Just a second. Uh, okay. Okay. I need to uh, step out now. So we'll stop here. So please join me next Saturday, 11, if we can continue, if you have more questions and we can take, uh, somebody had asked me to discuss trades also. I and mean, this week I take it for very few trades. So, uh, and of course today we didn't get time to discuss, but next Saturday we'll discuss any trades that I have taken. Uh, we'll do that. So we'll stop here for now and please join me next Saturday.